A united army of independents are already on the warpath with the Prime Minister. Essentially, I think what Mr Albanese is trying to do is to nobble the crossbench and to render us less effective. This move from the PM is hugely damaging and disrespectful. Australians voted en masse in May to send a record number of independents to Canberra. But when Parliament returns next month, the newly elected crossbenchers will have less support than they are expecting. The Prime Minister informing them in this letter that he proposed to allocate one full-time staff member at the advisor classification, an effective cut of three compared to the last Parliament. Really hard to understand how we can effectively discharge the duties that we have as parliamentarians with a staff cut of that severity. David Pocock could be the deciding vote on several pieces of legislation in the Senate. Pretty much impossible to be across all the legislation and to act, actually be able to contribute with, with one advisor. The Greens have also been impacted. Despite increasing their seats in the Parliament from 10 to 16, they've been allocated the same amount of staff. A spokesperson from the Greens called it short-sighted. We're all making um, cuts and, and um, savings. Although the government doesn't need the help of the record-sized crossbench in the lower house, it does need the help of the Greens and an independent in the Senate. And already crossbenchers in the upper house are planning disruption in the name of compromise. If we haven't got adequate resources to adequately understand the legislation, how can I possibly pass that on behalf of the constituents I represent in Queensland? I can't. So I'll either have to abstain or vote no. The government says it will bolster the help provided by the parliamentary library, but that may not be enough to stay in the crossbenchers' good books. Elias Kluwer, ABC News, Canberra.